Okay, just trying out a new, um, the new layout of Scratch, and this time we're going to make a um, same to the same as the catch game, but this time it's going to be a flying game where you're trying to dodge buildings and you're also trying to dodge uh, to catch things as they fly along. So same deal, the the layout's slightly different. Uh, here we've got all our, um, our actions on the left hand side. The good thing about this is I can switch between my different actions, but it's scrollable, so it's all in one. So instead of having to find, if you can't find it, you can just scroll up and down, which is great. So first of all, we're going to change the backdrop. So I'm going to click over here to the stage, the backdrop, and I'm going to choose a backdrop. Choose a backdrop, and because we're going to be flying along, I want some kind of uh, here we go, blue sky. All right, so that's that's fine. That's, that will do nicely. Uh, now our sprite. Problem with our sprite is that, well, you don't really want a flying cat. So let's have a look at what sprite we can put in. So, for example, we can pick a bat, um, we can pick a butterfly, we can pick a bird, a flying dog, that's not too bad. Um, now, there's normally a bird or some kind of bird. Now, I could sit here and look through it, but instead what I can do is just type it in. Bird, here we are, parrot. Okay, I don't need the cat anymore. Now, the good thing about the parrot is the parrot has different costumes. So, if we go over here, the costumes go from up, to down. And that's how it sits there and flaps its wings. Alright, so that's fine so far. Um, it is a bit big. Alright, so what we can do is we can adjust the size. Uh, let's adjust the size to about 50%. Okay, and direction is still there. That's fine, that's good. Um, so if we go from the different costumes now, it still keeps it at 50% and the good thing is you can adjust that size if you need to. Alright back to code so this bird is going to go here now I don't want it to move left or right I just want it to stay there and what it will do is it will go up and down depending on whether I press up or down button. Now in the past we've used a very simple one which is uh, where are we just got to get used to where everything is. Um, when space is pressed or when up is arrow is pressed, my motion changes. I want it to uh, change y by 10. Right now, remember we've got our, our x axis goes this way, y axis goes this way. So if I change y by 10, which I can do here, it's going to go up. Right now, the problem is I can't do anything for going down. So I've got to switch to, uh, I've got to add in the down button as well. Um, so, when another space, is, which we change to down arrow, is pressed, I want to change my Y again. All right? Now, difference is, because I'm going down, I need to change my Y by minus 10. Okay, so now I have up and down. But see how it's jerky? I don't like the jerkiness. I prefer it to be a lot smoother. It still will work, that's fine. Um, the other thing I want to do is, when this is clicked, Right, when the flag is clicked, I want it to flap its wings. All right, it's just a nice touch. All right, so forever, all we need to do is looks and we go next costume. All right, when I press go, it flaps. Now it's way too fast, so let's just put in a timer. So we're going to wait for one second. All right, that's too slow. So let's try 0.1. All right, do a fraction of a second. Uh, maybe too fast. Point two. Nice slow flap. That's about right. Okay, and then I press up, it goes up. When I press down, it goes down. Now, as I said, and you can see these, are, you can see this is flashing here when I press up, and this is flashing when I press down. Now, I actually don't like this method. This is one of the method we've used before for scratch for the um, left and right catch. I find it's not very smooth and not very fast because basically when it's pressed, it happens. So instead, what we can do is we can actually put in a bit of code where we go, when this is clicked, uh, we want it to always be listing. So we put forever, if, and then now we're doing a sense. So if, touching mouse pad, color, touching key space is pressed. Okay, and we're gonna press up arrow. I wanna change Y by 10. So it's exactly the same as this. All right, so I'll just stop that and start it again. Now, if I press up, if I press down, you can see it's kind of glitchy. If I press up, 
it's quite smooth. I'm just going to remove this one now. Might drag it off. So down versus up. Alright, so much better. So I'm going to do the same thing here. What I can do is right click and duplicate. Now I can change this to when the Darrow and is pressed minus 10. Right. Get rid of this. Okay, let's try it now. Up, down. Much smoother, much quicker, which means you can flap around. Okay, so we've got our bird. Next thing I want to do is put in some obstacles. So I want to add a new sprite. Come down here, I go choose a new sprite. Oops, hang on, go back. Add a sprite. All right, and I want a building. There we go. Buildings. Done. So I want these buildings to start over here. And we want them to move from left, from right to left. So first of all, when I start, in fact, what I can do is when I start as a clone, uh, won't, won't worry about the clones just yet. When this is clicked, first of all, I want it to start off the screen. So let's say go to, not random position, go to, at the moment it's 190 minus 2. So let's put that down and let's change that to 200. Okay, and we'll just start that. Oh, that's fine, that will do. In fact, I wonder if I can do 220 and actually make it start off the screen. No, it has to be way more than that. 250. Ah, oh, still going. 300. 400. Let's go really crazy just to see if it's actually going to go off the screen. Yeah, it's not going to go any further. All right, so I'm going to bring it back to 220. I'm fine with that. So when this is clicked, it starts over here. Then what I want it to do is I want it to... Well, there's a couple ways of doing it. You can repeat a certain amount of times, and each time we repeat it, we change x by minus 10, because we, we want to go this way. All right, let's try it. All right, so that's not far enough. So let's repeat that 100 times. Whoa, whoa, that was too many. 100 times. All right, stop that, repeat, and there we go. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Um, and then you would actually just send it back to the end and, so, and repeat that. Now, there is a better way of doing that. I'm just going to pull that off for now. And we go, all right, forever. Basically, we're just going to repeat this forever. I want you to change x by minus 10. So start it. Oops, wrong way. Minus 10. And off it goes. Okay. So... And it's just going to keep on trying to do that. That's fine. Um, but once it gets to this side, it's not doing anything. So we kind of have to put in a test. So if... And we need a sensor. So you can actually say if touching edge, but that won't work for this side. We can do... Uh, let's do this. Now this is testing for if a variable is correct. Now, at the moment we're going to the left. So if we go up to here and we look for x value, basically. Here we go. So if x position equals 50, and in this case it's at currently it's at minus 260. So if x equals minus 250, then what I wanted to do is I want it to go back to the start. Otherwise, change. Right? So basically, we'll just keep moving until it gets to the end and then go back to the start. Let's try it. There we go. Now, that's pretty boring. Okay, so I'm not very impressed by that. But what we'll notice, if we look at the costumes, there's lots of different costumes in here. So what we can do is, if it's going to go back to the start, why not change what it looks like at the same time? Um, so we can go... Next costume. So now what we have is a series of buildings that the bird is flying past. Now that to me seems like it's moving pretty fast. So let's just change this to minus eight. Mm, minus six. Okay, start that again. Well, that one's a bit hard. And why is that not starting? 
if y position is equal to minus 250. Right. Stop. Redo. Uh, minus 8. Start again. If x position is equal to minus 250, then go to there. Next question, change by eight. Why is that not working? That's interesting. So minus 257, let's change to minus 245. Start it again. Interesting. Okay. No. Interesting. Forever. If that's there, then do that. Change by minus 8. So yeah, it's at minus. It's going to move this slightly. Hmm. Man, has it gone through all the different costumes? Nope. That one's too high. Let's get rid of that. Code. Play. If x position equals minus 245. Ah, so yeah, good point. So, I'm tricking myself here. If x position equals minus 245, then it will do it. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't equal it, it just keeps on going. So this I've used is incorrect. I actually want if it's less than. If it's less than minus 250, then it doesn't matter if it goes past 250. It will just work. Okay. And I'm going to slow that down just a little bit to give my bird a chance. Okay. Right, so get rid of this. So now I've actually got something that's that's quite good. All right. Now at the moment I have a game where I can just well it's not really much of a game really, it's just flying up and down. Well, it doesn't even matter if I fly fly through the building. Oh, see? Nothing happens. So what we might do is we'll put in a variable. And I'm going to make a new variable, and my variable is lives for all sprites, okay? And let's just move this over to uh, down here. Okay, so on my bird, we want set lives to 5. Okay, so at the beginning of the thing, when we start, we're going to set the lives to 5. And now I can put this on any one, it doesn't matter. Now the problem is, if you're touching, we want if it touches a building, you want the lives to go down. So let's go to the building. I can put the code on the bird, or I can put the code in the building. So I'm going to I'm going to add a little bit of extra code. I'm going to do this. If oops, let's put this back. The other option is if. And now we've got a sensing, if touching the bird, if touching my parrot, what do we want to do? Well, we want the lives to drop down by one. Change lives by minus one. Okay, so lives will get a little bit less. And at the same time, I want it to do that go to, I then want to reset where it is. Go to 220. Minus two. Let's try that. So now, if my bird happens to touch it, it will change to a new to it will change the building. And I'll just change that costume as well. Because say we've got a hard building to get past, you want to be able to get a chance to go past it. There we go. All right. So and my life. But now look, I'm down to this. So I need to put a final a final variable in. Or final statement in. So let's go to the start. And this is clicked forever. So it means it always works. If, uh, and now we're going to have to do an equation. Let's do less than again. If the variable lives is less than one, so if it gets to zero, then I'm going to stop all. 
All right, so let's start again. Oops. Let's put this on the parrot. Okay, go back to the parrot. So I'm going to change this variable, put this here. And I'm going to do it this way. All right. So as soon as I click it, it will set the lives to five and then it will start. All right. So let's have a look. Four, four, three, two, one. Stop and it stops. And if I start it again, it will start. All right, so I've got a way of actually dying or the game finishing. What is? What's the point? I might, if I do this, I might as well just get my bird to fly up here. All right, no problems. So let's give them something to go aim for. So choose a new sprite. What do parrots eat? Well, they can do eat floating apples. Apples is good. Uh, let's just make that a little bit smaller. Let's make it no, about 75. Okay, well, let's make it smaller again, 50. So a little apple, especially compared to the building. So I've got my uh, apple, let's put some code. So I want the apple to start over here somewhere. And this is clicked, motion, go to, uh, yeah, that's fine. Go to, that's where, that's where it is now, 153 no, minus 90 and forever. Now really we want the same code as the building, don't we? So let's just grab this and put it on the apple, all right? Now the code's still here, but if I go to the apple now, it's it's there. All right, so we're just gonna change this. So let's remember our code, so when this is clicked, go to wherever the apple is now. If it gets to minus 250, then go back there, and next costume. It's got no more next, it doesn't have any more costumes, so get, get rid of those. If touching the parrot, change lives by, well, instead of minus one, let's say you get an apple. And then we go to back to where the building starts. Now, the problem is, if you do this, it will always be moving at the same point as the building. Uh, it's if x position is less than 250, it's 240. Okay, if x is at minus 230, then move it. Right, so here, apples disappearing. Oh, started higher. Oh, yes. Okay, so I don't want it to start high. I want it to start down nice and low, so it's difficult. Okay, change it. Now, as I said, the problem is it's going to always be in that one spot in the building, so it's not much of a gain. So how about we make it move slower? Can move minus four. So now when we do it, you've got to time it right to get the apple. All right, do we want to move slower or move faster? Just made it up. Oh, missed that one. All right, so now I have to go after the building. Okay, and my lives are going up. So let's put another one in because really this could go on forever otherwise. So we did the what happens if we, right, so let's do the same as before. In fact, let's go grab that other code. Here, uh, set lives, so change this. Oh, hang on, let's put it in here. Uh, so we can just put an if statement in here. If, and we'll do the same as before. Duplicate, if lives are greater this time, greater than say 9, so when you get to 10, then stop all. And we could put in a, you know, give one type thing. Right, so now there's our game. Ooh, fly through the building, get the apple. Ooh. Okay. And maybe it might be more interesting if we actually change and make the apple go faster. Minus 12, mm, a bit too fast, minus 10. Whoop. Okay. And then finally, just to make it give it a little bit of depth, let's add one more sprite. And this time I want to add in a cloud. Okay, is there any costumes? Nope. 
All right, so we've got a cloud. All right, my cloud is going to be a bit smaller than that. Let's make it about 50%. Oh, that's a bit too small, about 80%. And again, same code as the building. Put that on the cloud. Okay, but this time I want it to be higher. So I want Y to be 100. All right, I don't really care about the touching the parrot, so I can remove that bit. Okay, and I want it to move really slowly. So it's just going in the background. Okay, and there we go. And I don't want my bird to go behind the cloud, so let's put the bird up here. Pretty sure that's how it changes it. Okay. Let's looks uh so next backdrop, next backdrop, hide, go to pack layer. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. So we've got a basic game. And just for just for fun, because and for the people this is the advanced stuff now, still on the cloud. Instead of doing it this way, what I can do is go, okay, when this is clicked, I want to create a clone. Now, clone is the same as what it is now. Create a clone of myself. Not once, but forever. Now, if I do this like this, all of a sudden I have heaps and heaps and heaps of clones. So I want to wait and... I want to wait and I want it to be a, hmm, if I can, a random amount of time. Where's random? Here we go. Pick a random number between 0.1 and uh, let's say 2.0 seconds. Let's try that. One point zero and two and three point zero seconds. Okay, now there's an original one there that we need to get rid of, All right? So, don't want this over here. You've got when I start as a clone, go to the back layer, go to this point, and move, All right? I'm going to do it this way. So see, I've got the original one just sitting there, not doing anything. don't actually want that, so let's hide that. So we're going to, when this is click, hide, and when this is, when, this, when I start the client, I show it. Now, so it's going to move across. If this is less than this, the problem I'm going to have is, as they move across, so we've got this one moving across, and then it's going to go back to the start. So you're going to end up with more and more and more clouds, cloudy and cloudy. So instead of going back, what we can do is we can go, delete this clone. Okay, so when it gets over here, it's just deleted. And the last thing is, you don't want them all in a line, you want them spread out. So yes, Y, X is fine, but Y, I want to be random. So go pick a number. It's around about 100. So pick a number between, uh, let's say, 50 uh, to 200. Let's have a look. So now we've got some clones. I might say our clouds are just moving across. Right, you don't have to have as many as, you, as that. You can have them less by changing how often this happens. All right, so if I change this to between three, oops, and five seconds, then you're just going to be spread out. And now I've actually got a game. That's very simple. Basically, there's no score. It's just lives. So you see how long you can last and try and get to 10 lives. And you can put finished screens and stuff, but I'm not going to worry about that for this just yet. Whoop, up we go, over the top. So that's our game. That's all the work that you need to do for today. Oh, we're done.